Okay, welcome. We are live for Mantra Monday. Tonight's class is going to be slightly different than normal. Um, first of all, I don't have a final piece that we're going to look at tonight. Um, partially because this past week has been, this past weekend has been quite the weekend. I'm sure a lot of you also have had pretty intense weekends as well. And so I didn't really have a chance to come up with a new mantra. I was thinking of a bunch of different mantras to look at, and I just couldn't come up with one uh, that I wanted to share with everybody. So I decided instead to look at how to paint dog noses, but a very, very simple dog nose. Um, so we're gonna do that tonight. I'm going to put kind of my own Mantra Monday spin to dog noses, and you are more than welcome to as well. So for tonight's class, you will need a piece of watercolor paper. If you are using markers or colored pencils, acrylics, oils, feel free to use those materials as well. I'm using a five by seven piece. This is hot pressed. That means that it's smooth and not rough. You're going to need a pencil and an eraser. Um, you will need some watercolors or whatever colors of your choice that you will like. And for a watercolor brush tonight, I'm using uh, my favorite, a Silver Limited Black Velvet Round Size 6. You may use whichever round size brush that you have. We will be doing a little bit of detail work. So if you have a smaller brush, that will work as well. And I'm also going to be using a Micron pen for any of the wording or for any of the little details. Um, you also will need a paper towel or a rag and, of course, your water. So we're going to start by sketching it out. And before we sketch it out, I wanted to share with you, um, this is the a little sheet that I came up with for my Paint Your Pet Nights. And so I wanted to share the nose detail section with you tonight. So dog noses are some of the cutest things to paint. This is a very easy, broken down, and very few steps for a dog nose. So it can be simple if you are just beginning. If you are more advanced, you're more than welcome to add extra details that you see, but this is just kind of the simplest steps that I take. So we're going to start by sketching out our dog nose. And if we look at the majority of dog noses, because of course this isn't the case for all dogs, you have pugs and dogs that have more pressed in noses, but the majority of dog noses are going to have this oval uh, shape on top and a little bottom of a triangle at the bottom and then of course we have our two nostrils and these nostrils are going to be connected to the outside so we're going to sketch that out first first with the oval the triangle and then the nostrils i'm going to leave this somewhat close here so that you can still see this as we work and before i sketch out my nostril i am going to draw a few straight lines at the bottom. I'm still thinking of what I want my mantra to be, but I think I want it to be, sometimes you just need to cuddle with a dog, or sometimes you just need a dog kiss, or sometimes you just need something from a dog. So think of your mantra that you'd like with the dog, and let's start with sketching out the nose. So I'm going to be sketching it somewhat larger than than this nose right here but i still want to keep it smaller because i have this idea i don't know if it's going to work that's part of being an artist that you just try things but i wanted to have some um, concentric hearts around the nose and i was actually thinking of trying to do some rainbow hearts around the nose so i want to keep my nose slightly smaller if that's something you also want to try feel free to do yours about the same size as I'm doing mine. So I'm gonna start, like I said, with an oval-ish shape in the center. And the top of my oval is actually going to be 
a little bit less curved and a little bit more of a, like a rounded line. My edges are going to also be rounded, but they're not going to have as much of an angle here. Okay, I'm gonna keep it kind of around, maybe just slightly, slightly longer. And now I'm going to, before I do these nostrils on the center, I'm going to do my triangle below. So I kind of wanna pinpoint more or less the center. You can always use a little bit of a sketchy line to find the center because we want our triangle to come to that center line. And if that center's off, it's going to make our nose look a little wonky. Now check this uh, point at the bottom here. If it is too pointy, it might look a little awkward for a dog's nose. But more or less, this is about the shape that we're wanting. So you can see I still have some of these guidelines here. I have my center guideline for the center for my triangle at the bottom. Now I'm gonna add in my two nostrils. So pretty much where my triangle starts here, this, boss, this base of the triangle, is where my nostrils are going to come in and I'm going to I'm not going to come all the way to the center I'm going to come in with the nostrils and we do want a circular shape but it's going to be a little bit of a skinny circle and I'm going to try my best to do pretty much the same shape on this right hand side so we're trying to mimic what a dog's nose will look like from dead on straight. If he were looking straight at you with his nose. So that's pretty good. I think, I think I'm good with that for now. So some of these guidelines I'm going to erase. I don't need to erase all of them though. I'm gonna erase these guidelines in the center as best as I can. If it's not perfect, that's fine too. I am gonna try to just kind of clean it up a little bit. Now there is this tip that I've showed uh, some of you before that you can put your kneaded eraser into a rolling pin, set it down on your paper, and then roll over while pressing. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lift up the graphite. I'm not going to do that because I want you to be able to see it when I zoom out. But for you at home, you might want to just kind of take off some of that graphite layer. All right, so I have my dog nose here. I think I'm going to paint the dog. Well, I'm going to just see what it looks like with some hearts coming around. So actually, I guess I could have kept these little guidelines here because hearts are kind of tricky actually to draw. So I do want my hearts to be joined in the, the center here. So I'm going to start with one heart on this side and actually a dog's nose kind of resembles a heart to begin with. And like I said, I haven't painted this yet so I have no idea if it's going to turn out well. But the nice thing is, is if I decide that I don't want these hearts after I do the nose, I can always uh, just change my mind and try something different. So I think I'm only going to do this one heart because I have an idea of doing concentric hearts slowly getting larger with different colors. But really all I need is that one heart and then I'm going to use the paint to be able to the paint that I that I paint on there as a guide for the rest of the hearts. So all I really need is that first heart to, to look decent. All right, and with that heart around it, it kind of looks like a pig nose right now. So who knows if this is gonna work or not. We'll see, it, this will be part of the fun. So I'm just going to erase some of these guidelines here. All right, and now I think I'm ready for the paint section. I'm still thinking of what I want my mantra to be, and I think it might depend on what uh, my painting ends up looking like. 
All right, so now the steps that I usually take for painting a dog's nose are very similar to the ones that I have laid out here. I usually always start with a light wash of a Daniel Smith Moon Glow or depending on if the nose is a little bit more brown of a hue, I might start with a brown or a granulated color called um, sorry, Shadow Violet, which has a little bit more of a brown tone to it. If you don't have Moon Glow at home, that's okay. I will show you more or less how to mix Moon Glow um, if you don't have it. Basically, Moon Glow, it's a granulated color that is a combination of a black. This is Lunar Black, which I know is also granulating, um, but you can use any black that isn't very, very dense in color. And then Moon Glow also has some purple in it. So uh, you can add just the slightest tinge of purple. That might be a little too much. Well, actually, no. And it also has a little bit of blue in it. So you can also grab a, just a tiny little bit of blue. Now, because it's a granulating color, the Daniel Smith colors will actually separate when you paint. Because I'm mixing it myself um, and not using most likely the correct um, the correct amounts. It's not going to really granulate all that much. As long as you have some sort of first layer that has more of a purple tone to it. So if you notice from the light here, it, I mean, you don't have to have a purple undertone to it, but I do feel like having some color in your first layer is going to give any black a lot more depth. So whether you're choosing purple, blue, or if it's a brown nose, whether you're choosing a brown, I do feel like having some sort of color in there is gonna give it a lot more depth. So this is kind of this moon glow that I just made up. I'll show you what actual Daniel Smith moon glow looks like. It might look a little bit more like a gray Actually, I didn't do too bad. So there you go. Moon Glow is pretty much, like I said, a black mixed with a little purple, a little blue. It's just to give a little color underneath. So as you can see, we've got it one solid layer. It's quite watery and we're covering all of the nose. Now, if you would like to lift out some of these highlights here, I'm gonna tell you right now, most highlights are going to be on the bridge of the nose right here. And there's all usually always going to be a strong highlight just under the nostril. So that's always something that you can lift with your, with your brush when your layer is still wet or damp, I should say. So I'm going to show that to you now. Um, like I said, I'm going to use my Moon Glow because it's a little easier for me. It's already mixed up, but if you have to use yours. So one full layer here. We're going to work somewhat quickly because we do want to lift some of this up. So I'm going to continue back where I've already painted. I'm going over these layers. Wherever I just painted, I want it to stay wet. I don't want any area to dry before I can finish working on it. All right, so now that it's wet, it still looks like there's no highlights. I'm going to clean my brush, dry it completely, and now I'm going to lift some of these highlights. So I'm going to lift some highlights on the bridge of the nose, lift and dry, and I'm going to lift some highlights under the nostrils here, lift and dry. If you're finding that you can't really lift any color from those highlights, you probably have too wet of a layer. So if you're not able to lift, next time maybe don't add quite as much liquid there. So now we can already start to see the um, the shape of the nose. Now, 
technically when I teach students in a class setting where they've never painted before, I don't teach them to lift any of those highlights. That's just something that we do in the second step. Um, when I'm painting a nose, a, a dog nose professionally, I usually am going to come back in and do one more layer of moon glow, a slightly darker layer of moon glow, wherever I see some of the shadows on, a, on the picture. And it's usually going to be here around the edges, around the nostril, and around this kind of like uh, um, upside down T zone that dogs have in their nose. They do usually have this little line here in their nose and kind of a, a slightly darker on the underside as well. For the sake of beginners though, I tend to skip that second darker layer and just go to lunar black. So I think that's what we're going to do today. But before we do that, we have to let this layer completely dry. So since it is slightly still dry, I think I'm going to start with my first um, heart around that nose here. Like I said, I don't know how it's going to turn out. It may turn out poorly. If it does, it's a learning experience. So I think I'm going to start with purple. So you may choose whichever colors you'd like for your heart. And I don't want my purple to be quite this bright and vibrant. So I am going to dusty it up with a little brown. So it's not quite as bright, but maybe a little bit more purple. I think that was a little too dusty for me. All right, I think this should be good. When you are doing line work with watercolor, you wanna make sure that your brush is completely loaded, but that it's not dripping. So I shouldn't have any drips coming off of my brush. I do need enough liquid though, so that I can push the liquid um, on my paper. So let me come a little bit closer. I'm going to do this side by side and rotate my paper as I go. I'm using my wrist as a balancing point. And if it's harder for you to do these thin lines, by all means, they can be thicker than this. But you notice that I'm, I'm correcting my line as I'm painting. I cannot wait to correct it after I'm halfway around because otherwise it will dry too much. So I'm correcting the width of this line as I'm painting around. And because I don't like to push the opposite direction of, I always like to pull down and pull to the right because I'm right-handed, I am going to flip my paper and work in this direction. And every once in a while, make sure that you reload your brush with liquid. The minute that it gets dry is when it's going to get difficult for you to paint those lines. Remember that with watercolor, one of our main goals at least if we want the color to be consistent, we don't want to see our brush strokes. That means we have to have enough liquid so that we don't see those brush strokes. And I just have to be careful once I get to the start of this heart. All right, I'm okay that it's a little darker there. That doesn't bother me. So I'm gonna leave that and let it dry. That gave me some time for this nose to somewhat dry. So I'm going to look at my next step. Like I said, I'm gonna go right into lunar black. My lunar black here, I don't need to mix it this time with purple. I'm gonna use just lunar black, but I want a lunar black that's about this um, transparent. I'll show you with a little test paper. I don't want it to be the densest, most opaque uh, black yet. I wanna wait until the very, very end for all those really opaque black details. The one thing that I think is the most difficult and challenging when you're a beginner 
is to keep your layers transparent enough. Usually that means adding more layers. With this, it might only be, we might only have three layers. Um, if you want to add an extra layer though, that's okay. But sometimes I see beginners go in with too dark and opaque of colors too soon. Remember, we wanna kinda layer them all on. All right, so now this next layer of black, I'm gonna show you a little closer. We're gonna add shadows with lunar black. We are going to still keep this highlight here at the top of the bridge of the nose and it's following the same arc of this nose. And we are going to keep the same highlights under the nostrils. But remember, we're adding the darkest at the very, very end. All right, so here we go. We're going to, and see that's a little bit too intense of black for me. So I'm just going to take some black off of my paintbrush just so that it's not sitting so much. I am gonna fill in all the whole nostril here. I'm gonna come around the top. Remember that I'm going to mimic this shadow here. And this shadow at the very base. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so it's easier for you to see. So you can tell that this isn't the most opaque black that we're gonna have in this, in this painting. If you are a more seasoned watercolor painter, you are more than welcome to do more layers. I do feel like every time we add extra layers in our painting, we end up with just more depth. But since this is for beginners, I'm gonna keep it really simple. Now, one thing that you can do if you don't like the hardness of these lines is dry, uh, sorry, clean your brush with your water. And then you're still going to have to take the water off your brush. You don't want a brush that's soaking wet. And now we're going to blend these hard edges with a damp brush, not a wet brush. So we'll come in here. I think I need it slightly more wet. You don't want it dripping wet or otherwise you're gonna create unwanted blooms. But you can come in here with just a slightly wet brush around these edges and it'll make them so they're not quite as hard of an edge. So we're starting to see a little bit more of the shape of the nose here. And the very last part is going to be the darkest shadows. I'm gonna wait for that though, and I'm going to get my next color for my heart. So let's see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So I'm gonna literally do the colors of the rainbow here. And I'm going to just clean off a spot. So our next color is blue. Gonna get some water on my palette first. Then I'm gonna use a phthalo blue. And as always, that's a little bit too bright for my color palette, so I'm going to add a little bit of brown. And all this brown is going to do is it's going to just kind of mute that, that, br that brightness a little bit. So now with this blue, I'm going to do my second heart. Now, because I have the first hearts template, I am going to try to leave a, a white uh, heart in between. So I don't want my blue to go completely next to the, the, the purple. You can if you want it to. I actually think it's easier to leave a little bit of white than to go right up next to the color. The reason I think it's easier is because the minute that you overlap your colors in watercolor, you have a dark spot where those colors overlap. 
And so I think that it's a lot easier to keep it clean by painting with a little section of white in between. So I'm keeping my wrist on my paper and I'm trying not to move my not to move my wrist, but I'm just trying to move a very tiny section of my hand. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure. As you can see, I'm going over it. I'm kind of sketching the lines. I'm not doing just this one solid line here. It's a lot easier to kind of sketch out your lines. And I'm turning my paper as I go. I think that's a lot easier as well. So I'm starting, I'll just kind of tell you my, my process here. The first line that I make, the first paint stroke, I'm judging the distance between the white and the purple. And then I'm moving to the outer width. So first I'm looking at this inner line, judging that first, and then moving to the outer edge. If this kind of line work is too tricky for you, this is always a good way for you to explore multimedium projects. Something like um, using a marker or colored pencil with these lines might be a lot easier and it'll have the same effect as well. All right, so we have our blue here. Now we're ready for our last layer of our nose. The very last layer of the nose is going to be a somewhat darker lunar black and it'll be inside the nostrils. And then we're also going to be painting a center line down the very middle of the nostrils. And that's going to be starting about at nostril height, all the way to the tip of this, this um, triangle. And then we also are gonna pull some of that dark along this V at the bottom. You can always add a little bit of, of an extra darkness around these corners of the nose as well. I'll probably do that to mine and I'll show you what it looks like. So with the black that I just used previously, I still have some black. I don't need quite as much liquid for this, um, for this layer because I do want it to be a little bit more opaque. So I'm just using whatever liquid I have on my paintbrush and getting my lunar black from there. All right, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna start with the nostrils. And I'm going to kind of paint a little line out from the nostril to the outside of the nose. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Remember, we're trying our best to keep these two nostrils a very similar shape. Kind of a um, kind of like a balloon actually, where it's a little bit thicker on the top and it's a little bit thinner at the base. And I'm gonna pull out gently. If this line work is too difficult for you, you do have the micron pen. Now I think this line in the middle I don't want quite as dark, so I'm just going to add just the slightest bit of water to my paintbrush just to kind of make that a little bit more transparent. And we have this center line coming from the very center of the nostril. And I'm going to do a little bit of a V here at the bottom. It's a little bit darker here. Now I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna blend those edges a little bit. So I cleaned it, I'm gonna dry it. Remember, if we're blending, we need to, dry, we need to blend with a damp brush and not 
a wet brush and I'm just coming along the edges and I'm just going to blend these edges a little bit at the base here so it's not so extreme. Sometimes when you blend, you blend out the color you just added. So it's kind of a, uh, a fine balance of adding more color and then keeping what you already have. And then as I said, if you wanted to add a little bit of a darker accent around these corners here, I would not um, necessarily outline the whole nose. Usually the corners here, you'll have a little bit of a darker shadow on these corners. But be careful if you are painting a dog nose in real life, be careful of completely outlining, especially on this top edge. Add a little bit more in there. All right, and that's a super basic dog nose. Now, if you had wanted to add a little bit of extra around the nose itself, you can always add some forms of dogs have um, like these little splotches above the nose where it's a little bit darker. A lot of pit bull breeds have these little splotches around their nose. You can also add um, underneath it, you can add a little bit of the mouth, the start of the mouth. Um, I'm gonna leave mine just like that. And I think I'm gonna work on a few more hearts as I think of my little phrase. So I think my next is going to be green. So I'm gonna use a sap green. And with my sap green, I'm still gonna add a little bit of brown. I don't want that too bright. All right. If you have a different idea for the nose, you're more than welcome. This is your painting. You can add some splatters. You can add a mouth. You can add some eyes. I just kind of wanted to keep it simple and only focus on the nose. And then try to do some fun, cute design around it. And sometimes line work actually helps to calm me down sometimes, where all you're worried about is just focusing on painting a straight line. And the nice thing too about painting like this is that if you get a little too close and these white spaces aren't completely uniform, you usually can't tell if you have multiple shapes. So since I'm doing multiple hearts, in the end it's, it's going to be very difficult to tell where my mistakes are. Or at least that's the goal, right? All right, and I think I'm not going to do yellow. I think I'm just going to move to orange. Maybe, maybe like a yellow orange to kind of combine the two. Let's see here. We'll, we'll see what it looks like. Maybe just a little hint more of orange. And 
And then of course our last color is going to be red around the outside. Remember that you have to keep loading your brush up with more liquid. The goal really is to be moving the liquid, not to be creating a brush stroke, at least for these hearts. Hopefully as I paint, my hearts aren't getting too distorted. All right, and my very last one, I'm gonna do a little red and then I will be done. So let me clear off a spot. All right, we'll use, this is called anthraquinoid red it already is a slightly a slightly more uh purple toned red but i am gonna still add a little bit of brown to it just a little tiny bit and here's our red I don't know why, but for some reason, these colors, when they're muted like this with the brown, these dusty colors, especially in the rainbow like this, are very nostalgic colors for me. It reminds me of like, uh, like Garden Patch Kids, Cabbage Patch Kids, and um, what were those horses? the My Ponies. I think a lot of the rainbows back in the day were these more muted rainbows instead of the very neon bright rainbows that sometimes you see today. Each of them of course is, is pretty on its own but I think it's kind of nice for a little bit of nostalgia when you see these more muted rainbow colors. This this red one, uh, this red heart, I'm actually making slightly thicker than my other colors because it is the last one. And if you're like me, don't forget to breathe while you're doing this. Sometimes I hold my breath when I'm doing line work. It's definitely not good for you to hold your breath. It actually helps to be breathing. <laughs> helps to stabilize your brush. I made a little bit of a mistake there, but that's okay. All right. I 
And there's my design. Didn't really turn out exactly what I had in my mind, but it's still kind of cute. Hopefully people realize that it actually is a dog nose. <laughs> and then underneath, I'm going to think of my mantra. And it can be something punny, like, like, I don't know, something about, about dogs and, and sometimes you just need a dog hug or sometimes you just need to cuddle a dog or some, or, or wet kisses are better. I don't know, something cute like that. I think I'm going to do sometimes you just need to cuddle a dog or to cuddle with a dog. So sometimes I feel like cuddling with my dog kind of got me through this last weekend. Sometimes just need to cuddle with a dog your dog in a large, larger all caps there sometimes you just need to cuddle with a dog isn't that the truth if you have a dog out there let me let me know if you have a dog if your dog cuddles also make you feel better my dog cuddles my dog, my dog, Trufa, whenever I cuddle with her, it always makes me feel better, too. <laughs> All right, so that is our a little unorthodox um, mantra Monday, but I hope it helped to make you feel a little bit better. And next week, Monday, I will hopefully have one all planned out for you. Until then, have a really great week. And remember that if you get a little sad, maybe you just also need to find a dog to cuddle with. Have a good week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please follow me on social media, check out my website, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.